you worried that your Mac might be infected with viruses? But well, fear not, in this video, we're gonna be covering five simple steps to check if your Mac is infected. We'll dive deep into the tactics that these sneaky viruses use to stay on our systems. From launch agents to login items, we'll cover it all. Follow along as we guide you through our comprehensive checklist for reviewing and finding threats on a Mac. So make sure you stay tuned so we can banish those viruses for good. Hello cyber peeps, welcome back to our channel. My name's AJ and on this channel we cover everything from cybersecurity to online safety. So in this video what we're going to be explaining are the five most common places where malware likes to hide on a macOS system and often in the cybersecurity world this is known as persistence. So malware persistence in the cybersecurity world is a technique that malware or viruses use to remain undetected on a system even after a reboot or even after attempted removal. And on a macOS system, malware may try to achieve persistence by installing scripts in locations that are automatically executed by the system itself, even after a reboot. And for a hacker, malware persistence is extremely important because the longer that they can stay active on a system, the more likely is they're going to be able to steal your personal information or potentially even pivot to another system within a network. And the longer that they stay on the system is the longer that they can perform malicious activities without the user's knowledge. And as a cybersecurity defender or a blue teamer, the whole point of being able to detect persistence is to prevent malware from staying hidden and re-establishing itself so that we can protect the user's data and integrity of the system. And then five methods that we're going to be covering in this video, launch agents, launch daemons, login items, event monitor, and cron. So overall then, we've covered five of the most common persistent mechanisms that can often be used by malware to hide on a Mac. And as a blue teamer or a cybersecurity professional who is working in the defensive side of cybersecurity, it's extremely important to be able to detect these persistent mechanisms so that we can increase the overall security of the company's network that we're working for. So the first persistent mechanism that we're going to be looking at then is launch agents. And you want to open your terminal app, so you can do command key spacebar, type in terminal. So first up, we're going to be running this command. And what this is doing is looking for launch agents, which are associated with the current user. And a launch agent in macOS is a background process that will start automatically, usually when the user logs in. And they run in the background to perform various tasks. And it's defined by a property list file or a plist file located within the specific directories inside the file system. And they're both used by legitimate applications and potentially malware to execute code automatically. So they're useful for regular and legitimate applications so you can start things in the background without you having to start them yourself. But unfortunately, this means that it can actually allow viruses to do the same thing. So the main idea here then is to review the common directory paths where launch agents are actually stored review the property list files and get an understanding of what that file is actually doing. So by running this command here, it's going to show me all of the plist files and the launch agents that are associated to my specific user account. As we can see here, we've got three plist files within this directory path. And if for any reason that you don't like using the terminal, you can also check these out in the file explorer as well. So you can press command key and spacebar, and then you can search for the path and open the folder there instead. You can open up these files then, control open with text edit. The idea here then is to review this file to understand what is actually going on. And if you do want a bit of help in analyzing these files, you can go over to Ch ChatGPT and ask it to give you insights into what this file is actually doing. So all I've done is said, give an overview of what this file is doing and what you think it is. I've then posted the contents of the plist file. But before you go doing this, this is on my personal computer and this is just for testing. If you're working in a corporate environment, I wouldn't recommend that you're posting plist files that could contain sensitive company information into ChatGPT. So as we can see here, then ChatGPT is giving us an overview of what it believes this to be. So as you can see here, it's got a configuration purpose. This plist file appears to be configure a system or schedule task related to Google Update. This specific task is likely to be designed to periodically check for updates and Google software installed on the Mac. And you can see that it's scheduled the integer value of 3,600, specifies the interval in seconds at which this task should be triggered. This equates to an hourly execution schedule. So it's just saying how often this will actually, how often this will actually trigger to attempt to update Google Chrome. And then it gives us a nice summary run. So the plist configures a periodic task that runs the Google Updater application 
every hour in a user's graphical session to check updates for Google software. So based on this overview, it doesn't sound like this plist file is actually malicious. And another thing you can do is to get some more analysis on it, you can just do a Google search on this file. And as we can see here, there's quite a few different articles which are talking about this actual file, which is likely increasing the chance that it's not malicious. But of course, there could be a chance that this legitimate file has been edited and malicious strings have been added to it, but in this case, it doesn't look like it. So again, the idea for launch agents then is to review each one of these files, get a good understanding of what it's actually doing, and then that'll allow you to make your decision on whether it's malicious or not. And make sure that you don't just go randomly deleting these files because if they are used for legitimate purposes, then it could cause issues with your machine. So always do your analysis first before deleting any of these files. And one other place you can also look is library slash launch agents. So these are actually accessible to all users that are on their Mac. I've only got one account on my Mac. And as I do the search here, there is actually no launch agents in that folder. So next up, what we're going to be looking at is persistence with launch daemons. So launch daemons on a Mac are like automatic pilots that run software in the background on a Mac. So launch daemons will start up tasks before the user actually logs in, and they will keep tasks running that the system actually needs to be able to function properly. So these tasks could range from simple maintenance or actually starting up essential services. But just like with launch agents, launch daemons can be misused by malware. And one place that we can actually look is library slash launch daemons. And again, these are also plist files or property list files. And what we're gonna be doing, just as we did with launch agents, reviewing the content of those plist files and making a decision whether to remove it or leave it on the system. And again, if you prefer using the graphical user interface, what you can do is just go directly to the file path open that up, open the file with text edit, review the file, copy this into ChatGPT and ask it for your understanding of what actually is going on. You can also review this yourself. So as you come through here, then you can get a good idea of what it's trying to do. So it's actually referencing the Zoom daemon file here. It doesn't look to be anything that looks to be standing out as malicious. Things in here it could be referencing another malicious application because the, the whole point of this plist file would be to enable the malware to restart. So likely you would see in here potential unusual file name or something that is unexpected to be installed on your system. So the third persistence mechanism that we're going to be looking at are login items. And login items are programs or files that will automatically start up when you log into your Mac for the first time. So your Mac will automatically open up applications or programs for you to use or to start as soon as you log in. So this may seem like a handy tool, but often for malware, they can use it in the same way and they can use it to start up when you first log in. So to find those login items, it's pretty simple. You go into your system settings, then you search for login items, hit enter. And so these are the login items and all the programs that will open a startup. So as I've got Loom here, that's something that I use. I know it's a legitimate application that I've installed. So I'm happy with that application. If there's any applications in here that you don't know of or you haven't seen before, then it might be necessary to take action such as removing it like that. And the fourth persistence mechanism that we're going to be exploring on Mac OS are Emon rules. And Emon rules on a Mac are very much like instructions for a security guard which tell it what to do when it sees a specific action, when it sees something specific. And this security guard on a Mac is actually called Event Monitor Daemon. It actually keeps an eye on your Mac for any unusual activity. And then when Emon spots a match that triggers one of its rules, like a certain error type or a specific event triggering, it will then follow the instructions which are listed in that rule, which could be generate an alert or take some action to handle the situation. The thing is that a malware could create their own Emon rule for persistence and be able to insert specific instructions inside that rule that would allow the malware to automatically reactivate or perform some malicious actions. So unfortunately, the Apple looks to have removed these Emon rules from Mac from the latest version of Mac OS. But if you're using earlier versions of Mac OS, then these are some of the locations where you'll be able to find some of these Emon rules. And one other directory path to look into would be etc emond slash engine and again what you're going to be doing here is looking at the plist files understanding what actions they're taking and trying to confirm if they're malicious or not the final persistence mechanism that we're exploring is cron and cron on mac is much like a digital scheduler that runs in the background on your mac 
is used to automatically run tasks at specific times or intervals. Imagine it like an alarm clock. Instead of waking you up, it's used to tell your computer to perform specific tasks such as taking backups or even updating software, or maybe running a script to clean up your desktop. But much like the other persistence mechanisms, cron can be abused by malware so that it can automatically run their malicious script at a time that they choose. And to check if your Mac has got any crons scheduled, what you want to be doing is do crontab-l, and you can see here, this is a test one that I've put in. And what this is saying here is that it will run this script at 3 a.m. every day. So likely, if you don't have any cron schedule, you didn't do them yourself, a lot of these could be highly suspicious. So if you did want to edit them and remove them, you could run crontam-e, which would allow you to edit your cron file. And what you could do here then is just remove this line, save the file, and then you could run the command again. And you can see that the file is now blank. And overall, by being able to do this, it's going to enhance overall security. It's going to increase our users' trust. And it's going to allow us to adapt to all of the evolving threats which are coming out. So I do encourage you to always perform regular checks on your own system if you're not currently working in cybersecurity. Or maybe do the same for your family members. Now, thank you for watching this video. If you did like this content and you want to see more of the cybersecurity tech tips and tutorials, make sure you click that subscribe button. And if you are interested or you're trying to get into cybersecurity, then I do recommend that you go and watch this video next.